Don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's Christmas Eve. I have a house full of guests, but I still wanted to come up and just spend a few minutes doing another page in my um, volume of the dolls. So um, you've already seen page one, you've already seen page two. So today I'm going to do page three. Now this is a page that I originally started adding paint on from the mop-ups of the previous two. So I looked at the greens from here and the blues from here and literally they just got dumped onto the page while I was mopping up. I don't always waste the paint that's on my craft mat. If it's on a baby wipe and I've cleared it off there, I tend to smear it on some of the pages. So today I'm going to use this one. So I've gone through my paper doll collection and I've pulled out this chappy here. Um, but I've also pulled out this chappy here. Now it's sitting on something, so I thought it would be quite fun to do something a little bit tongue-in-cheek today. So what I did is I searched through my collection of digital images that I have on my computer that I found over the years, and I found um, the perfect thing to get him to sit onto, but I'll share that with you in a minute. Um, so first thing I want to do is just to create a little bit more interest into the background on this double page spread. So I've gone to my Dina Wakely paints this time and I've pulled out um, some Sedona Red, some Cheddar Orange. I've got, not only have I got black and white gesso here just on hand, but I've also got black and white in the Dina Wakely. But I've also got some turquoise. So these three colours go quite well together. Um, the orange with the turquoise works really well, it's kind of a nice Mediterranean kind of feel to it. But just to add a little bit of extra spice into the background, I'm going to be using some Sedona. Um, as I said, it's going to be a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek page. I kind of know what I want to do. Um, so just to add a little bit of colour and texture and interest into the background, I've gone into my 12x12 paper collection and I found a sheet um, from a Graphic 45 collection that I've got called Safari Adventure. Is it called Safari Adventure? It says, come on. Oh, it's won't quite the bag now. There we go, it's caught on the handle. Yes, Safari Adventure. This is from a few years ago, 2016 it says on the front. So probably, you know, it is quite old as far as collections are concerned. And this is one of the sheets. On this side it's got the parrots with those fantastic leaves on. On the back it's just got that leaf pattern in the black and the green. I don't want to use this side. I want to use this side. So as you can see I've already started just to tear the top off. Like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the corner from this side. Try and get in that parrot there. And then from this side, I'm going to take this corner and try and get this little parrot down here. So I'm just going to tear around. I actually, probably should be doing it from this side so I can get the white. That's more like it. So I'll get that white edge. And then I'm going to stick that in that corner there, just to kind of give it a little bit of a tropical feel. So, first thing I need to do is to get these glued down onto the page. And to do that, I'm just going to use bog standard um, matte medium. So, just make sure there's nothing sticking. Yeah, it's coming out fairly easy. I've got a brush. It's good, like I said, it's going to be a real quick page today. I've got mum and dad downstairs with me who've come over for Christmas, so I don't want to come away, I don't want to be away for too long. But you know, when you get the urge to do something, well, I got the urge. So let's get that stuck down out there, that'll do. 
and it's going to go over the top. Hopefully, that's going to stick down. This is quite heavy paper. There we go. And I'm going to do the same at this side of the top. It probably would help actually if I put some on the back. So that we're double siding it and then just try and catch that up to the corner. If I go over a little bit, don't really mind. That'll do. Spin that round. Get it underneath. End up sticking half the pages together now. I've got that much glue on it. Okay, that should be enough. Get that dropped in some water. Get this cleared up and get this dried off. And I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so they're pretty much stuck down now. So I'm going to take some gesso. I've shook it up so I've just got a little bit in the lid and I just want to grab a little bit of water so I'm just going to water it down a little bit and then I'm just going to add a coat of gesso over the top you'll still be able to see the colour underneath but it's just going to add a little bit but it'll just knock everything back just a tad. Particularly when it comes up to the piece up here, it'll just knock it into the background. So the colors are not quite as prominent. It all starts to blend. Look that look. As quickly as I've done that, it's practically dried. So I'm just going to get a little bit more and then just add a little bit more white towards the top. A bit more down here towards the bottom. Just to kind of help it blend a little bit. And then do the same thing at this side. And I'm pretty much using a dry brush now just to kind of get that colour to blend in or the background to blend in a little bit. Kind of helps to knock everything into the background. You can still see it, but it's kind of just toned it all down. And then I'll put that white gesso away. Just quickly just wipe that up. I am kind of working quickly today. Like I said, I don't particularly want to um, be away from my guests for too long. So I'll just quickly give that a blast. Okay. So I've now got a couple of stencils that I want to use. So I've got from my collection, this is the Arabesque stencil, and this one is called Arrows. It's dirty, I know, but you can still see the pattern. There you go. If I get a piece of black card or black paper underneath, you probably would see better. There you go. So that's the Arrows and the Arabesque. Yeah, much better. Okay, so first of all I'm going to use is the arabesque. So I'm going to place that 
towards the middle and this is where I'm going to bring in that kind of cheddar colour. So let's have a little bit of that cheddar. And I've got my artist sponge fragment. And I'm going to start to build some of that colour starting inside the pattern on the paper and then just working my way down the page. And just kind of loosening up towards the bottom. Like so. And then on this side I'm going to carry on on that kind of diagonal path if you like and then just work the stencil in down towards the bottom like so. And then just up at the top I'm going to add a hint of it like so. So I'm happy with that so I'll put that to one side, dry that off Okay, so that orange is now dry, so I'm going to bring in that red, which is the Sedona, which is like a, it's almost like a terracotta red. Just got a little bit of that, which is going to pick up the reds in the background as well. And then on this side, I'm going to flip the stencil over and do the arrows coming down the page. So I'll pick up the paint, work it in, and then just lightly run it through. I'm not going really, really heavy. I'm just dabbing lightly. Just overlaying that orange pattern a little bit with the red. And then on this side, I'm going to flip the stencil over so the arrows are going up. up some more paint and then from the bottom I probably went a little bit heavy there but that's okay and then up into the paper pattern at that side I've splodged, but hey ho. Okay, so that's coming down there. It's not actually touching this bit here, so I might just add a little bit extra. Nearly, I'll use the wrong side then. I just use the remnants of what I've got on the sponge, just to add a little bit coming down into that orange pattern that we created there. That's more like it. I'm not too bothered about that. Okay, so get that cleaned up. What I did start to wipe up the orange on this page, so I'll just add, there's probably not a lot of acid on the left on there. No, there isn't. So I'll just use that for my fingers. Yeah. Painted inky fingers. Get that dried. Okay, so now we've got that in place, I want to bring in that turquoise blue colour. We've got blue in the background and we've got some blue hints coming through from the paper, so I just want to add a little bit more kind of blue texture just by using some of this turquoise colour in that foreground. And I want to add a little bit more organic kind of structure into there. So I'm going to use the wood grain stencil from Tim Holtz. So I'm going to add a little bit of that blue turquoise just up here. A kind of wood grainy pattern. 
also looks a little bit like a zebra pattern, if you know what I mean. And then we're going to add a little bit of it down here. Just to kind of break it up a little bit. And then we'll use the same pattern part down here. Although wood grain is a great pattern, it's blooming fiddly to use. Because it's so thin and wispy. And then we'll add another little bit of that just across that central section there. And here it bouncing up and down. So we've got a couple of nice textures going on there in the background and kind of layers, nice bright kind of layers. Okay, so let's try and get my fingers cleaned off while I dry that off too. So that's pretty much dry now. So I now want to start adding a little bit of darkness to it because it is kind of bright and wowy. So I'm bringing in my vintage photo distress ink. I've got a foam sponge. So I'm just going to load up the sponge and I'm going to just lightly just go around the edges. Now if I've got, here we go, polypropylene paper protector, what I can do is I can just, I've lost the ink. There we go. And I can just go around the edges, just adding a little bit of darkness onto that page there. And that's just come up, so I need a little touch of glue in there. And I've just thrown the lid behind me, totally by accident, but that will stick. So I need to swap that round and then carry on. And it just helps to kind of tone down the wowy colours that you've got on the page. Down. What I can do is just grab a little bit of a bulldog clip just to hold that down, just for the time being. Okay, now let's start to add my characters. So I've got my first one, which we're going to place around about here. So what I need to do is I first of all just need some string. So, oh, this is going to be a fine one. Oh, there we go. So I'll just snip off that end and then I want to wrap this around just so it looks as though he's holding it in his hand. So if we wrap it around like that, that's going to be good, hopefully. I could do actually with maybe a, something just a little bit adhesive just to hold it in place. So let me just try maybe a little bit um, just a tiny bit of adhesive that's just going to hold it. Come on. And just stick it 
there. That's going to hold the piece of string. So I need to add it just underneath. That's it. And then I can wrap it round. And then I'm going to glue a little character in. I have already gone round the edge of my character with a distress marker just to get rid of the raw white edges. And we'll stand in there. And then I'll just need to stand something on him just to hold him down. Something a bit heavy, so let's try his feet and then that. And then while I'm doing that, I'm going to cut off a bit of a string at this side because that's going to be attached to something else. And I'm just going to leave that for a minute or two just to bond and hold, and then I'll be right back. Right, that got a little bit fiddly. So I've just had to kind of like pre-prepare it. So what I've done is I've just added a piece of string around his wrist and then round the neck of this chicken, as you can see, which is printed off on a piece of scrap. And I'm just going to add the glue around. I did say it was going to be a bit tongue-in-cheek and whimsical, this one. So just because it's Christmas Eve, it doesn't have to be a Christmassy kind of page. And then I'm going to place my chicken just down there like that. And I've put plenty of glue down on him. I want him to stick down properly. Now on the back of the chicken's neck I did put under the foam pad just so I have somewhere to hold the string. So again, I need to add something fairly heavy just to weight it down onto the page. And like I said, the PVA glue will dry clear, so that's okay. So I'll give that a second or two to dry, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so my chicken is stuck down well enough for me to be able to work on it. So I've got my little boy, what did I call him earlier? Humphrey, or something like that. I've added some foam pads behind him, just to kind of make him sit up a little bit. And then I'm going to just stick him down on there. I did say I was going to get him to ride something or sit on something. So there you go. Right, so, quote and phrase. So, looking back through the sheets that I've been using on a couple of these pages, or one of the pages, the first page really, I found another two phrases which are going to go quite well with this. So, I've got, I've stuck it down to my craft mat here. So we've got, trust your crazy ideas, which I really like, because that kind of fits nicely. And then, as a matching one, we've got one that says, never doubt your instinct. And I'm going to put that one just down towards the bottom. Like that. And then, like I've done with the previous two pages, I'm going to grab my Stabilo All Pencil, put a little bit on the mat, get some water, and just lift some of that up. And then what we can do is we can add a little bit of ground in under his feet. But we can also bring it down a little underneath here. 
and then just phase it out towards the left and phase it out towards the right. And if we want to go a little bit darker, we can do, and then just bring it down. It's a little bit of shadow. It just kind of helps the page to pop a little bit. And then we can add a little bit more just underneath the feet of our chicken. And remember, the more water you add, the more diffused it's going to become underneath. Just like so. And then if you want to, you can just join them. And then while we've got a little bit, we can just add maybe a little bit of shadow just underneath there, and maybe just a little bit of subtle shadow. Just behind our chappy. A bit more water. We just want a little bit more. There we go. Like I said, just a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit of fun, a little bit of whimsy. It's all a bit of a laugh. Okay, so what I did while it was also drying at the bottom is I just quickly went over my two characters with that clear gesso um, just to make sure that there was no shine on them. However, it did go kind of funny on his chest. It actually looks like he's got chicken poo on him now. <laughs> Wasn't intentional. <laughs> so I'm pretty much done with this, to be honest. Um, yeah, I've come up, I've had a little bit of fun playing with the background, um, playing with these two characters and adding that chicken in just as a little bit of whimsy. So yeah, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. So all I'm going to do now is just to add um, a little bit of, of a frame. So I'm just going to do a squiggly frame. Just on the two pages. You see the thing with these kind of like art journals is you don't have to do that really exact frames as long as you've got sometimes it doesn't need a border sometimes it does but I just think today I need to add a little bit of a border to it just to finish it off and then I'm going to sign it and date it so 24th of the 12th, 19. And then I'm going to call this page done. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that quick art journal page. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now, as it's Christmas Eve. I'll be back in a few days. I hope you all have a very, very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a great new year. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.